What's up everybody, my name is Steve and this channel is all about hiking, backpacking, and enjoying the outdoors in Southern California and beyond. If that interests you, consider subscribing. Now join me as we seam seal the Six Moon Design Skyscape Trekker. Okay, so it's finally time to seam seal the Skyscape Trekker. One of the first things that you want to do whenever you're going to be seam sealing any sort of tent, and I mentioned this in my last video, uh, you want to, what you want to do is you want to walk around and make sure that you're checking out any potential problem areas. Let's go ahead and jump off the tripod and take a look at all of the uh, problem areas that I've identified from earlier, or again, potential problem areas. One of the major areas that I was kind of concerned about was right up here at the top. If you'll notice over here, we've got this huge fold, we've got this very pronounced seam, and then another major seam running down, which is the back seam, along with the top up here with its uh, with the seam over here we also have a seam going across we have one seam going down and another seam going down over here now I don't believe this seam over here is going to need to be sealed because it's way past the zipper over here so I think we'll probably be a-okay with leaving that one alone if we take a look on the other side we have a very similar setup of course the major seam over here we have one seam going down one seam going across and then another seam going down one of the other areas that we're going to have to go ahead and hit is we're going to have to hit these major seams right over here. So we have to make sure that we keep track of uh, what we're doing there. And one of the things that we're going to have to do, because I noticed that the fold over is kind of interesting and, and kind of gets in the way, we are definitely going to have to pull on the fabric as we seam seal the area to kind of stretch it out to make sure that we're getting it actually on the seams. And lastly, what we have is this final seam right over here that will go across, uh, which is connected to the net on the inside. So we definitely want to hit this seam up. And I don't believe we're going to need to go any further than that. Maybe I'll go about an inch or two further just in case. But beyond that, there's really no need to seam seal beyond there. One other major area that you want to make sure that you hit up whenever you're doing any sort of seam sealing is when you have loops like this on the outside or guy out points like you have right over there. You definitely want to make sure you hit those up and um, don't forget those. Those are definitely areas that you want to kind of uh, really get the seam sealer on really well to make sure that you're uh, not going to have any problems there because a lot of stuff has happened wherever any of those guy out points are or these uh, loops on the outside, a lot of stuff has happened there. As with any seam sealing job, the first thing that you're going to want to do is set the tent up for about at least a half an hour. Now, this tent has been kind of sitting out here for over a half an hour. Um, you want to go ahead and stretch it out, um, pull all the lines as, uh, you know, you don't want to go too crazy, but you want to pull them out so that the tent is sitting as taut as it can. Uh, that's really important because then that allows you to be able to, to access the seams and be able to uh, uh, paint on the seam sealer without any sort of problems. Right here in front of you, you see all the items that you're going to need to seam seal the Skyscape Trekker. Right off the bat, we're going to be using a uh, silicone-based uh, sealer that we're going to make ourselves. And it comes, um, the kind that I, the particular brand that I like to use is GE 100% waterproof uh, silicone. That's going to be the base to what we're going to be doing. And then we're actually going to go ahead and dilute it using camp fuel. Now, you can also dilute uh, silicone with... Uh, mineral spirits but unfortunately in california i can't seem to find mineral spirits anywhere um, i just checked home depot the other day again i still couldn't find it but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to make a blend of the two that's going to allow you to actually paint the seam sealer on as opposed to squeezing it out and leaving a bead i mentioned this in a previous video that i did on seam sealing that you always want to dilute your seam uh, sealer so that it paints on and um and it'll just make life a lot easier for you whenever you're seam sealing anything. Along with that, what we're going to use to do our painting is um, these two different styles of brushes. I purposely purchased both styles because um, for the major seal, for the major seam across the top of the tent, I wanted to have the bigger brush to use. Um, it's a little bit firmer, and it'll allow me to to kind of really push into that seam and make sure that the seam sealer is getting in there. For all the other seams, I'm going to be using the smaller one. And in here I have a bowl that I'm going to mix everything in and some sticks I'm going to go ahead and mix everything with. 
So let's go ahead and put this all together and um, we'll take a look to see what the seam sealer should look like before we start applying it. And one last very important item that you're gonna need is you're gonna need a roll of paper towels with you because once you apply the seam sealer on there, you're gonna actually wipe off the excess. And it wipes off um, pretty nicely, I have to admit. It's a pretty uh, easy method to use. Okay, for our mixture, we're gonna go ahead and add about equal parts seam sealer and equal parts um, camp fuel. Okay, so you just go ahead and dispense a healthy amount of seam sealer into there. Let's go ahead and grab our camp fuel here. And we're gonna go ahead and dilute this down. Now the nice thing about it is that if you put a little bit too much of either, either substance, you can always add more of each one until you get the balance correct. And what we're doing here is we're trying to get it the consistency of, of warm honey. Okay, after doing some mixing, I wanted to, head and, wanted to go ahead and take it away from the camera because it was a kind of, um, um, as I was mixing, it was kind of shooting up and out of my mixing um, tray here. But this is about the consistency that you're looking at, the consistency of warm honey. And what's really nice about this is that this will allow you to actually paint on the, um, the seam sealer and uh, it actually makes the whole process very, very simple. And once we allow the Red Baron to pass, Now what you want to do whenever you're doing this is you want to go to one of the seams that are very easy to do just to kind of get your bearings straight. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do this seam across the bottom over here. And uh, we'll see how this one goes first. Okay, and then again you just basically paint this right onto the seam. Very simple process. There you go, and then take your um, paper towel and just kind of force the seam sealer into the seams. And then just kind of inspect it, make sure that you got all the areas. It looks like there's a spot here I might have missed. Now again, what I was saying earlier about this area, you want to definitely get everything underneath here too. You really make sure that this guy out point, that you hit it from all sides. Alright, let's switch it up to one of the other seams now. Next seam we could do is we'll go ahead and we'll do the long seam across here. Now this one's a little bit different in that we're actually going to have to tug on the material as we're going down the seam. Okay, so what we're going to do on this one, get a good amount of seam sealer and then set this down and then go ahead and tug on the material so that the seam opens up as best you can and then really try to try to get it in there. Just go over some of the areas that you, you think you might have not gotten seam sealer on very well. And just wipe off the excess and make sure to force the, the seam sealer into the seams. Okay, so one other thing too that you want to make sure, that I'm kind of learning myself now I guess, is that you want to make sure that the mixture doesn't, um, basically the mixture thickened up on me. Um, yeah, depending on the weather out here, if it's nice and warm, the mixture may thicken, thicken up on you. Essentially, the white gas inside there evaporates, so you want to kind of keep moving along and make sure you hit up, hit up areas uh, relatively quickly. Because also what I noticed too is that the, the um, when you're using the paper towel, if the uh, stuff is kind of gunked up on there and dried off, 
you could run into some problems. So you still want to uh, hit this up while it's still, still pretty wet with a paper towel. I'll go straight down the line here. Okay, so that takes care of the rear seam. Now, now we're gonna do what's, what I would consider pretty much the hardest part. We do that upper seam. Now what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna go ahead and open the door and press that seam up from inside. So give me a sec, let me get that all set up here. Well, it's hard to believe that the most important part of this entire process didn't get recorded, but I'll go ahead and try to recreate essentially what I did. What I did is I went ahead and I opened up the door over here and because this material sits kind of weird, what I did is I actually just pressed the crossbar up and then went across with seam sealer in this area. And what it allowed it to do was to, to bring up the material where I can access all of it and make sure that I get all the seams. But uh, yeah, unfortunately the camera wasn't recording. I thought I had hit record, but that will allow you to go ahead and get all these intricate kind of seams up here. Uh, basically, once you've done that, once you've done this line, you've taken care of the door, you've taken care of the back, you've taken care of the top. There's really only one more area to do, which is this side. Uh, these three um, areas up here, this top corner, one line, two line, and then the line across uh, covering the door. And then you're done. All right, so we're back. It's been a couple hours now. Everything feels pretty dry to the touch, but I think I'm gonna wait a little bit longer before I actually run some water over this. Just has like the ever so s slight stickiness to it. But yeah, it seems like everything sealed without issue. All right, so it's been a few hours now, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and give it the old rain test here. So let me fire up the hose. Alrighty, so that should kind of give us uh, give us the info that we need right there. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, so on uh, initial inspection. Looks like everything is completely dry on this side. Looks like all the netting is dry. Looks like everything on the inside is dry. I'm gonna lift that door open over there from earlier. Oh, I do have one drip right over here. But you know what I think, actually I think that's from the back side over here where the rain got on there. So this wasn't actually a drip that was from the ceiling, from the top, because it doesn't come down from the top. Um, like it doesn't drip down from the top. It looks like it might drip directly from there. So I think we're actually okay. Uh, with that, let's see, let's feel up in here. Everything's dry up in there. And let's go ahead and open this up. I'm feeling up in there. Yeah, it's bone dry in there. Nothing. I don't feel any wet, any wet parts at all. No, it doesn't seem like there's anything over there either. Nothing that was on the ground. It 
Doesn't make sense right there. No, there's nothing in there either. Yeah. So it looks like we had a successful uh, seam sealing job. I was looking down on the floor over here. Nothing on the floor either. So yeah, good stuff, man. Very good, very happy with this. I do want to speak about one thing, which is the material. I went ahead and you could see some of that is still uh, wet over there. I went ahead and just uh, towel dried the tent for laughs just to see what it would be like underneath. And sure enough, man, the material is nice and uh, nice and dry. It's just some amazing material, this silk polyester. I could see why they went uh, this route, why so many tent makers are going this route. But uh, yeah, loving this tent. Excited to use it uh, here in a few days. Now that I've finished seam sealing this tent, is I'm actually going to add some permethrin to the uh, netting. That's one thing that I want to make sure that I uh, don't have a problem with is uh, with bugs. Um, yeah, it's really annoying when you open and close your tent and uh, have to deal with bugs. But um, yeah, I'm going to put some permethrin on to the uh, netting portion of the tent here to kind of uh, keep that from being an issue when I take this out. Okay, so the stuff that I'm going to be using is uh, Sawyer brand permethrin. This is stuff that I use in my clothes too. And uh, this stuff's great also for tents. Now, you're not going to put this on the uh, material, uh, the sill uh, polyester material, rather the netting. So on the black areas, not the green. Not that it wouldn't work on there, but the idea with the permethrin is that it absorbs into the uh, material and since that so polyester is uh, hydrophobic by nature, it's not really gonna uh, absorb in and pretty much is just gonna wash away in the first rainstorm, the chab. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get to uh, doing that right now. All right, so let's go ahead and spray this, uh, spray this guy down. Now, once you spray the permethrin, you're gonna wanna leave it uh, to dry for at least 35 to 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. But essentially, yeah, I'm gonna spray all the, all the netting area. And again, permethrin is really only, um, I guess for lack of a better term, hazardous uh, when it's wet. So once it dries off, it's perfectly fine. But you definitely don't want to have any animals around while you're doing this. But this really is going to help keep this tent as bug free as possible. Um, you know, whenever I go, and of course, if you get some on your hands as you're as you're doing this, you definitely want to wash your hands immediately afterwards, because you definitely don't want to have this on your hands if you're going to do uh, some other things. And um, I don't know if uh, you guys do or not, but I definitely use permethrin on all my clothes too. It makes a huge difference. I many years I didn't use it, and then I started using it, and my goodness. Um, definitely notice a difference. I mean, I still will get some bug bites from time to time, but big difference. Let's see if we loosen this up. Maybe it'll be just the right amount of slack. There we go. Alrighty. There you go. That's that. In about 45 minutes or so, we should be uh, set to go with that completely dry. I can pack up the tent and now it is adventure ready. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it helpful, I'd appreciate if you let me know by giving me a thumbs up down below. And while you're at it, take a look at some of the other videos I've done on the Six Moon Design Skyscape Trekker. I think you'll find them just as helpful. Until next time, take care.